In this video, we're going to dig into two important measures of concentration in acidic and basic solutions, pH and pOH. And these are really just concentrations. So conceptually, the way to think about pH, for example, is as a measure of the concentration of hydronium ion in a solution on a logarithmic scale. Relatively small concentrations of hydronium can have big effects in acidic and basic solutions, and hydroxide as well, which is one reason we use the P operator, which is a logarithmic operator, to bring relatively small concentrations onto a human-friendly scale of one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. This avoids the overuse of exponents and has some physical relevance as well. It's actually easier to measure the logarithm of a concentration in some cases rather than the concentration itself directly. And that's certainly true when we're thinking about hydronium and hydroxide in acidic and basic solutions. So to begin, let's start with the definitions of pH and pOH. pH is defined as the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration in a solution. And if we think about that the other way around, that means that if we know the pH, the corresponding hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the negative power of that, to the power of the negative pH. Likewise, for hydroxide, pOH is the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydroxide concentration, meaning that the hydroxide concentration is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pOH. In neutral water, we've previously seen that the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations are both 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. This means that the pH and pOH are both equal to 7 in neutral water, and so they're equal to each other. In an acidic solution, and in fact, before I move on, that holds regardless of the temperature. In neutral water, pH is equal to pOH regardless of the value of Kw, right? So at higher temperatures, lower temperatures, whatever the temperature is, pH is equal to pOH in a neutral water solution. This is, in fact, the definition of a neutral solution. In acidic solutions, the pH is less than the pOH. And in basic solutions, the pH is greater than the pOH. And this is worth thinking through mathematically the implications for the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations. For example, we've seen previously that acids, when dissolved in water, increase the concentration of hydronium. Because of the negative sign in the definition of pH, this actually decreases the pH. So a larger hydronium concentration corresponds to a lower pH value, for example. And I'll let you think about pH and pOH in a basic solution on your own. This, again, is it's worth pausing the video and thinking through a little bit to make sure you get, get the math of pH and pOH and their relations to the hydronium and hydroxide concentration straight in your head. So in general here, we can say that pH plus pOH is equal to pKW. This is an extension of an equation we've seen before, the equilibrium equation for Kw, the self-ionization of water, being hydronium concentration times hydroxide concentration. If we take the negative base 10 logarithm of both sides of that equation, we arrive at pH plus pOH equals pKW, and at 25 degrees C, pKW is equal to 14, which gives rise to a rather famous equation here that pH plus pOH is equal to 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. And the implication here is if the pH goes up, pOH must go down, and if pOH goes up, then pH must go down. So there's sort of a seesaw effect here on pH and pOH because they must together sum to 14 in any solution. And this goes back to the point we made that in any solution, any aqueous solution, whether it contains an acid or a base, and regardless of its temperature, pH plus pOH must be equal to 14, or in other words, the equilibrium equation for the self-ionization of water must be obeyed. Let's dig a little bit deeper now into this idea that pH depends on the presence of an acid or base in an aqueous solution. And to start, let's remind ourselves of what we just said, that the equilibrium equation for the self-ionization of water is always obeyed. So H3O plus concentration times the OH minus concentration is always equal to Kw. Now, in essence, by the definition of an acid, how we've defined a Bronsted acid, acids decrease the pH of neutral water, and they do so by reacting with water to produce hydronium ions. Let's think about what this looks like in aqueous solution. So we end up with the conjugate base of the acid and hydronium as a result of this potentially reversible equation. And so 
If we think about a solution where we have hydronium and hydroxide and blue and purple and the conjugate base A minus, what happens as a result of this reaction is the generation of a relatively high concentration of H3O plus. But what happens to the hydroxide concentration in re response to that generation of H3O plus? Well, it has to decrease in response to the elevated hydronium concentration. So hydronium concentration goes up, hydroxide concentration goes down. And if you count the dots in the solution, you'll see there are more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions in this solution. Now bases have the opposite effect. Bases react with water to produce hydroxide and the conjugate acid of the base, HB+. And so here again, if we think about a basic aqueous solution and what's going on at the particulate level, at the single molecule level, we have an elevated concentration of hydroxide now, more purple dots, if you will, than blue dots. And we also have HB plus dissolved in the solution to some extent, as well as B, which I've left off. Neutral B may also be dissolved if it's a weak base, for example. But the main point here is that the hydronium concentration has decreased in response to the elevated hydroxide concentration caused by reaction of the base with water. And so here we're seeing that sort of seesaw effect on hydronium and hydroxide concentrations, which translates into a seesaw effect on pH and pOH in acidic and basic aqueous solutions. This slide just shows some examples of acidic and basic solutions, including those that you might find in a chemical laboratory, as well as solutions in everyday life. So for example, one molar solution of a strong acid like HCl that's a pH of zero. And pHs can absolutely go negative. For example, if we had a 10 molar solution of HCl, the pH of that would be negative one. This is a misconception that you sometimes hear that the pH scale is limited to values between zero and 14. It's, it's simply untrue. This depends on the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide in the solution, and we can vary that really to any level desired. Um, and so even though the sum of pH and pOH must be equal to 14, the values of pH that pH can take on can be anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity, at least in theory. Toward the middle of the scale, we find some solutions that are familiar from everyday life. Gastric juice, famously acidic. Wine, coffee, these are also slightly acidic. Sodas are also on the acidic end. Um, carbonated beverages blood on the slightly basic side, baking soda on the slightly basic side, and then household ammonia, we're getting pretty basic up at a pH of 12, and one molar NaOH is another good laboratory benchmark to keep in mind. That's a concentration of hydroxide ions of one mole per liter, and that corresponds to a pOH of zero and a pH of 14. And so this just gives you a sense of where various solutions show up on the pH scale and makes a, an important practical point that many solutions from everyday life are not neutral. They're either acidic or basic, and this often contributes to their function. For example, stomach acid being acidic facilitates the digestion of food. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the hydronium ion concentration that corresponds to a pH of 7.3, the pH of blood. So all we're doing here is just applying the definition of pH. The hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pH. So we can simply plug in here 10 to the negative 7.3, punch that into our calculator, and the result is 5 times 10 to the negative 8 moles per liter. So pretty straightforward math here, just applying the definition of pH to calculate this hydronium ion concentration. In this problem, we're asked about pOH and pH of a solution of potassium hydroxide in water at a concentration of 0.0125 moles per liter. The first thing to realize here is that as a ionic compound, strong electrolyte, KOH is going to dissociate fully in water into K plus and OH minus. This means that the solution that we're thinking about here has a hydroxide concentration of 0.0125 moles per liter. KOH fully dissociates, right? We get one hydroxide ion for every one KOH formula unit that dissociates. And so I think the easiest way to start here is to calculate the pOH first. 
since pOH is the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydroxide concentration, and we've already calculated that, and this comes out to 1.903. To find the pH from the pOH, we can apply the fact that the sum of pH and pOH must be equal to 14, and this means that the pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, right? So when we plug in that 1.903 for the pOH, we arrive at a pH of 12.097. And just as a brief sanity check here, this pH should be greater than 7 because this is very clearly a basic solution with an elevated concentration of hydroxide and a diminished concentration of hydronium relative to neutral water. Finally, this slide just tells us a little bit about how pH can be measured or detected. In the bottom left, we've got a universal pH indicator a substance that when dissolved in water changes color in response to differences in pH. And so we've got, for example, solutions running from quite acidic at 0.1 molar HCl all the way up to quite basic at 0.1 molar NaOH. And you can see the gradient of colors that appears there. pH paper accomplishes a similar effect, but rather than being in solution, the substance that changes color is impregnated on a piece of paper so that we can just dip that piece of paper in the solution and get a visual colorimetric indication of what the pH is. And these are sort of semi-quantitative in that you can correlate the color with a, a given scale, a scale that comes with the pH paper, to get a rough measure of the pH in quantitative terms. For more precise and accurate work, the use of electronic pH meters or sensors is definitely recommended. And these work on electrochemical principles primarily, where the voltage of an electrode depends on the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide ions in the solution. And so with these, you can get a direct uh, readout of the pH to whatever precision the instrument can provide, which is great, of course, for quantitative work.